You got a tattoo? Then you gotta have a story. Here's this week's sneak peek. I don't know burlesque is if Broadway and a strip club had a really, really expensive baby and then sprinkled some rhinestones on top. Baseball guy here and I'm in Houston, Texas. And I think I got my favorite Texan of all time right here. This is the lovely Kitty. Kitty, how are you doing today? I am fantastic. I'm excited to be here and to talk to you about my tattoos. All right. So you've got quite a few things going on here and I just, she's giving me a little sneak preview and I'm loving the stories. Let's talk about your first tattoo. It's a little itty bitty one and it's already been covered up, but tell me about your first. So my first was a heart. It was a micro tattoo on my wrist. I literally walked out of my high school graduation, got in the car with a girl that was my best friend and we went to, ooh, one of the just tattoo shops and if you live in Houston you know Montrose is populated with nothing short of 15 tattoo shops so we walked into the first one that would take us and the guy was like it's a hundred dollars and I was like I didn't know I was like okay yeah this micro tattoo that's the size of a pinhead hundred dollars seems legit handed over my graduation money and got this tattoo with this girl get matching tattoos, life is great and then a week later she gets knocked up on purpose so her boyfriend wouldn't break up with her and I don't mess with girls like that. So I went and got it covered because I was like, yeah, I don't want to be tied to this person. And I mean, that's the whole thing. You make a momentary decision and you always have the option to cover it up or keep it. So. And tell me about the little uh, cover up that you got on that one, the state of Texas. So um, I was at a cheerleading competition. I was helping coach at a friend's gym for a bit. And I left for my lunch break and went to the Strand on Galveston and had some like old school hippie dude that I'm pretty sure was strung out on meth, but I don't know for sure. Um, tattoo it. And it is the blotchiest, scratcherest looking thing you've ever seen in your life. It doesn't look like Texas at all like the heart is still very visible like the top of texas is a heart which you know it's there now and half the time i forget that i even have it because i have so many other tattoos on my body but it it's a fun story i i lived through it i don't know <laughs> maybe it's the state of texas like before the war with mexico was over you know the border was so different back then loosely interpretive version of texas it's an artistic interpretation of texas <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. We, we love it. Now, speaking of artistic interpretations, you are an amazing piece of work that you have created this awesome artistic interpretation of yourself. So, I mean, and it goes down from your clothing, your tattoos. Um, I love the eyes. I mean, those eyes just sparkle. Tell me a bit, a little bit about kind of what you like for your style. So I am a uh, burlesque performer as well as an internationally published pinup model. Um, so we can see you burlesque. Yeah. Uh, if, for those that don't know, burlesque is if Broadway and a strip club had a really, really expensive baby and then sprinkled some rhinestones on top. Thank uh, Dita Von Teese, who is married to Marilyn Manson, if you don't have any frame of reference, that glamorous vintage Hollywood kind of vibe. Um, I took that a different direction. I obviously am very inspired by the 60s. Um, the dress I'm wearing I actually made and sewed all the little sequins on my hand because um, Twiggy had a dress that was very similar. Um, my entire closet is either vintage or handmade by myself. Uh, and I take a lot of pride on that. I think everyone should be able to dress up and be their own art doll every day and express who they want to be because leggings are not a fashion choice. Well, but what you've got on your legs are a fashion choice. So you've got this amazing bunny and there's a really great story tied to these tattoos here um, and your partnership with Maddie. So tell me about that. Yeah, so um, I have tarot cards on my leg. We're in the process of doing a sleeve of tarot cards and flowers, and then the entire background of my leg will be blacked out. So the only pops of skin you will see is in the background of the cards and in the flowers, um, which is a huge life commitment. It's not something that can be lasered off or removed or covered once it's on there, it's there. Um, so I had come to Maddie with an idea to do a rope bunny, which is a shibari thing, because uh, I do rope fetish stuff um, and model that as well and does that mean you like to sleep with bunny rabbits no it means i like to be tied up and hang upside down by one leg and all sorts of madness but uh so what are you doing after the shoot i am gonna <laughs> go to sleep no um yeah so maddie had drawn a technically perfect shibari rig on a bunny um and had handed me his iPad and asked, you know, if there was anything I wanted to tweak just to let him know, because I'm an artist as well. And I had sent him my art of a uh, rope bunny and was like, you know, this is kind of what I'm thinking. Um, he, I took it from him and I redrew the face and that's what got me my tattoo apprenticeship. Um, 
So the cards on my leg have been, I draw the characters and I hand them to Maddie and then Maddie will tweak them and tattoo them in his style. So it's been truly the most collaborative you can get on a tattoo piece. Um, there's little hints of definitely Maddie's personality. Like my death card is a cat with a mouse in its mouth and she's got like a little sickle face tat, but she's in a little boater hat because they're all based on uh, 50s greeting cards because that's the style that I draw in. I draw lots of like 50s American greetings, animals. Um, I'm really inspired by like 60s Japanese coloring books and that's the kind of work that I don't see a lot of that I'd like to tattoo on other people. Um, just like Maddie, I believe there's a story behind every tattoo and I've, you know, throughout my apprenticeship got to sit with him and listen to some of the most painful, harrowing stories from people. And while it might be a really dumb Mickey Mouse tattoo to you, it's something that deeply means something to them that they've moved past or lived forward from. Um, you know, I have a hanged man on my, on my leg as well as the death card and those are two cards that people look at and they're like, ooh, um, the hanged man is the ultimate surrender. It's giving up yourself to the universe and making a decision that life goes on and you can take a second to pause. And a lot of people see the death card as the end and in all honesty, it's not, it's rebirth. Um, I got both of those as part of my journey to getting sober. Um, I've been sober for almost a year now. Congratulations. Yeah, so it's it's been a deep thing. We've got some cool ones coming up. Like my lover's card is two squirrels sharing a nut. Cause we, That's adorable. Yeah, we, we have fun. And I liked the pun in there because they were sharing a nut. I'm, I'm a six-year-old boy. I find humor in just complete trash. Um, I keep joking. I want like a King of the Hill shin jelly tattoo on my shin because why not? Um, I'm sure my mother is rolling somewhere just mortified that I just keep adding things at this point. But at a certain point, you reach this moment where it's like, I just want to do things because they're fun. Like the first tattoo I gave myself was because it was fun. <laughs> well, you mentioned your mom. What's your grandma think about your tattoos? So um, we're not particularly close anymore, but one of my tattoos we got very shortly after Hurricane Harvey. Um, one of the local shops was doing a benefit where money was going to the J.J. Watt Foundation. So me and my 70-something-odd-year-old grandmother sat down together. She got tattooed and I got tattooed together, and people thought that was the oddest thing they've ever seen. She got a Texas. Um, I got death before decaf with a French press because I was working um, with the fire department at the time and living on coffee. And if someone had handed me decaf, there would have been a riot. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I've been tattooed with my grandma. My mom has, like, one tiny baby tattoo. She's not too keen on it. But uh, my family's been very supportive. My dad's a watercolorist and an artist and has gone above and beyond to support my journey in becoming a tattoo artist and, and was thrilled to find out that that's what I, had, you know, made the ultimate decision that I wanted to pursue. So you've worked for a fire department. You've... Uh, aspiring tattoo artist now you do burlesque um, what else have you done and what are you going to be doing in the future um, so my current project is uh, working with Maddie on a kind of different direction for tattooing both of us have kind of come up with the concept of small intimate one-on-one -on -one and kind of stepping away from that broader open space tattoo shop so people can have that moment to really internalize and, and express their feelings. So somewhere between therapy and tattooing, and I think that's that's kind of the future of what we're moving towards as people really are able to scout out artists through social media and Instagram, and you know who you're going to get tattooed from. The era of walking in and picking something out of a book is, is kind of coming to an end, and I'm excited to go this direction and see where it goes. Um, you know, I had my shop apprenticeship, I started there, and it wasn't the best time for me, but I am excited to see where I go with it and to pursue tattooing cute, girly things. Um, I'm definitely not of the school of thought that you should be able to look at a tattoo and tell if a boy or girl tattooed it. I, I don't tattoo like a man, I don't draw like a man, I have no intention to. I'm a girl, I make girly shit, and I wanna put girly shit on other people's bodies, and I think that's fun. All right, awesome, and um what do you've got some girly girly shit on you and you've got some maybe some manly shit here too right I've got a little bit of everything i you know um i've got tattoos that were done by a friend during her apprenticeship and i look at them now and i know they're not the best work in the world but i know that she worked really hard on them and i can look at them from a technical standpoint and say like oh i wouldn't have done x y and z or i would have done this differently and i think that's cool and it's a learning growing moment i've got um a crosshatch tattoo, which if you know anything about art, it is single line. It's going in alternate directions to create art. Um, when I came to the tattoo artist that did that and said, this is what I want, he's like, people don't do that in tattoos. And I was like, cool, that's what I want. And he sat there and with a shader 
and every line is raked into my skin individually to create that cross-hatched effect, which is really unique and I haven't seen that in anybody else's work. Um, two of my tattoos on my body I drew and had an artist do. Um, the pieces Maddie's done I've drawn. So a lot of my work I've drawn or came up with a concept and was very specific about what I wanted. And that's kind of a learning lesson for anybody that wants tattoos. Don't be afraid to be specific. It's, it's something on your body. Nobody's gonna fault you for saying, hey, I don't like that. Awesome, awesome, and great lessons for you guys. And what I, I'm amazed about, you're, you're such a Renaissance woman, and your intelligence just really comes out. Like you have this creativity and an intelligence behind the creativity. It's just a fascinating combination. And, and the idea of the therapy with the tattoo really hits home because I work in the behavioral health field when I'm not interviewing here and behavioral health world means a lot to me. There are a lot of hurting people out there and people need that healing. And a lot of people use tattoos for healing. We've had some amazing stories for that, um, you know, and so being able to combine that together that does sound like an amazing future, and I'm just so proud of what you're doing. Thank you. I, I do a lot of work. Um, I work with a national nonprofit called The Battle and Betty's. We work with veterans and first responders who struggle with PTSD um, and do a lot for those communities. I'm a veteran with PTSD myself, so I, I live that reality every day. Um, it's, it's one of those things I've I've worked so many jobs and I have extended myself to so many communities and, and been touched by communities where people deeply struggle. I've you know, lived through really traumatic uh, domestic abuse and things like that and I have tattoos that I got when I separated from that situation and it's constantly a work in progress. And you know, I, the other day I started planning my, my sobriety tattoo and Maddie's gonna get to do that and that means the world to me that my one of my best friends is gonna get to help celebrate that with me and, and it's, everything on your skin is a depiction of where you've been. And it's never a picture of where you're going. And I think too many people put a focus on, what are you gonna do after you get tattoos? Well, the tattoos are part of my person. It's every inch of my body tells part of the story and where I've come from. And you know, the 18 year old kid that got a giant side portrait as my second tattoo, whose grandmother flipped out because my sweater kept sticking to my side during dinner. Wasn't my proudest moment, no, but it's it's all a, a step in the journey and where I've been and the difference between me and somebody with no tattoos is I can point at things and it's a visual representation. I'm obviously a very visual person, that's how I make my art and I've just included my skin as part of that. And that second tattoo was the Boris Karloff one. Which which one of your tattoos is the most recent? Um, so my leg has been the most recent. Me and Maddie have done probably almost 30 hours on my leg. And we actually were talking about working more on it last night. So y'all were gonna get fresh tattoo this morning, but both of us were exhausted. Um, other than that, let's see. Uh, my Friday the 13th, I got that with two of my best friends. We call ourselves the Spooky Wives Club. And we went in on Friday the 13th and kind of started an uproar in the shop because we were just like dealer's choice. And they were like, that's not a thing. And I'm like, Maddie can literally freehand whatever he wants on me. And I got this derpy little uh, cupie doll that looks like the Del Dixie pickle girl, which was not the intention, but it kind of just happened. <laughs> so now I have the pickle girl on my arm. But um, my other friend got a bat and I think there was a spider, or no, it was a goat and a spider. So they all got spoopy things as well. Um, it's funny because it's I apprenticed for someone that I have such an opposite style from. I'm very pastel and bright and happy and colorful. Not that I look at right this moment, but um, I think it's cool that you can approach people that don't necessarily have that exact same style and you have so much to learn. One of the people that I learned a lot from was, uh, he's an old school tattoo artist, uh, Indian George, and he has taught me so much, even just by being in the same space as him. So it's amazing, you learn from people that don't look like you, don't come from the same background, and I think that's what I love most about tattooing. Well, and it sounds like you're you're learning from people, but then you're incorporating it all into your own style. And you're doing some things that probably have not been done before, which is pretty amazing. Ooh, I don't know about that, but um, I, I'm, I'm humble and, and I want to stay that way. I, I think there are a lot of artists that have paved the way for things that I want to do. Um, I look at people's work like Nico and his portraits. The Sailor Moon that he did on Kelly Eden makes me want to just sob every time I look at it. It's so good. It looks like he oil painted it on her skin. I look at his work and it's just like, how do you do that? I look at people like Kelly Doty who have made an entire brand on just an aesthetic and how she looks and her work and just everything is her all the time. And I look up to and I admire people like that. 
I, you know, have seen a lot of the bad parts of it too. And people that are like, Hey, you need to conform to this style and do this thing. And I think the world is changing and I think tattooing is changing, you know, where, you know, technology is changing, equipment is changing. And it's my very humble opinion. I'm not speaking for everybody by any stretch of the imagination. And what I say is not law. Um, Cause I'm sure there are some people that will have some opinions about what I have to say, but it's simply my opinion. And I think we live in a world right now more than ever where people just need to pause and listen to what other people can bring to the table. Well, Kitty can bring a lot to the table. And Kitty, where do they go to uh, be able to get tattooed by you? <laughs> so as of right now, I'm still in my apprenticeship. So I won't be tattooing openly for a while, but I will be working with Maddie um, at the Midnight Mausoleum. I'm also available at uh, Kitchy Kitty Art on Instagram. Um, and Noir Lale at Instagram. Both are easy to find me. Um, I post all of my work there. I post a lot of my digital art and stickers, stuff like that. Just some fun one-offs for now. Awesome. Well, guys, you're about ready to see um, her career is just going to continue to skyrocket. Um, just thank you so much for the time today. Really appreciate it. You're amazing. This is Baseball Guy telling you to like this video, comment, especially about how awesome she is um, and about how much I suck. And uh, well, maybe I'm okay. And then please, please, please subscribe. This is Baseball Guy and Kitty, and we're out. Baseball Guy here. I'm in Houston, Texas, and I have Brianna. Brianna, you aren't a Houstonian right now. You yeah. live in Pennsylvania, right? Uh, yes, and I'm originally from Maryland. I had moved to Pennsylvania about four or five years ago with my other half fiance, Michael, who is taking care of our little children. <laughs> and, and so now Michael is the, the leader or the head of the Twisted Angels, correct? Yes. And so you're one of the Twisted Angels? Yes, sir, I am. And, and do you get special privileges? Um. Sort of, I guess. I mean, I live with my photographer, so I can get shoots whenever I want. I mean, but then again, kids come into play, so I don't really shoot as often as I'd like. But, yeah. All right. Now, <laughs> when the kids aren't around, you're getting some tattoos, and you've got some really awesome tattoos. What was your first ever tattoo? My first ever tattoo is actually on my back. And it was done by... One of my ex's best friends, he's a scratcher, which is not really the the most appropriate artist out there. But um, we were having a party, and he did a tattoo on my back, and I wanted a rose. So it's got the words love along the stem. I got that professionally done. <laughs> But um, I wanted to get it touched up because there's a lot of scarring and stuff. But um, he had passed away two years ago due to an overdose. So I wasn't going to touch it after that because it's got too much, too much value. That, that's, that's sad, um, but it's a nice memorial piece now. How long ago did you get that? Um, f five years ago. And in those five years, you've added quite a few pieces since. Yeah. Um, which one's your favorite? My favorite would probably be the bumblebee on my foot. Um, everyone growing up, I, I would always get called B or B girl or BB by my parents and my grandparents all the time. And I told myself the tattoo that I always wanted to get would be a bumblebee um, in resemblance to, you know, my nickname that would, that always stuck with me and I finally got it and I went in to see my artist at the time who's out of Ink Life Tattoo Studio in Glenburn near Pasadena area and um, he <laughs> I came in with an idea he transformed my idea into something better so now I have this really cute attitude bumblebee that's got a crown on top of her head with purple eyeballs <laughs> And, and I love you got some amazing color and some amazing eyes. First color piece. First color piece. Okay. And, and, and you've got another color piece of an owl, and it's got a crazy eye, too. So what's the story behind the owl? I'm obsessed with owls. Owls is like my uh, spirit animal. Um, my nursery for my, my first daughter was originated with the whole owl theme going on. Um, 
I'm just obsessed with them. Uh, you know, I got that done by Dave Clark from Ink Masters, and uh, he wanted to test out this this new ink that no one's ever been tattooed with before. And, you know, that same day that my other half proposed to me. <laughs> so, what a special day! Yeah, I was pretty angry that day. He wasn't there to hold my hand. My leg was hurting. It was numb, and he was nowhere to be found. And then after I was completely finished, he went up on stage in front of an entire tattoo convention and proposed to me in front of a bunch of strangers. <laughs> We, we see that your daughter here wants to help out a little bit with the interview. Um, when is she going to be allowed to get a tattoo? 18. <laughs> five. No, no. My fiance says five, and no, that's not happening. <laughs> of age. So a future twisted angel, but we'll wait till she's old yes. enough. Now, now you talked about the owl on your leg. You have another owl on your arm. Why don't you tell me about the, the owl here up on your shoulder? Well, I've always liked um, the sense of dream catchers, uh, how they capture all the bad dreams and the, the good dreams flow down the, the feathers. I've always had a dream catcher in my room, um, and I, I like the idea of combining one of my favorite obsessions, which would be the owl, inside a dream catcher. It's a little bit smaller than I would like, but it'll do for now. <laughs> Women always want it bigger than what men are willing or <laughs> capable of giving them. Isn't that true? This is very true. <laughs> Thank you, Ty. <laughs> now, the thing about owls that, uh, that I love is um, our own Katie Kaz, one of our interviewers, she has an amazing owl on her arm. So owls end up becoming a big part of the Tat Stories community. So we definitely thank you for sharing about that. Oh, you're absolutely welcome. I have no idea about that. That's cool. Now there's another part of the Tat Stories community, a man that we've interviewed. We've interviewed his wife, and we actually did some interviews from his shop and even interviewed his 13-year-old daughters is Hollis Cantrell. And you have an amazing piece done by Hollis. Tell us about that. So I've... I've always been into horror. I'm a horror junkie. Um, and Michael Myers is probably one of my most favorite um, horror movies out there. The what, was it Austin Powers or which Michael Myers movie? Michael Myers, um, Halloween. Oh, that Michael Myers. I thought you meant Austin Powers as in horror. You know, that movie kind of scared me. <laughs> Austin Powers is in his own right uh, a good actor but yeah baby yeah <laughs> shrek yes shrek because that's all i watch half the time is the big green ogre <laughs> oh nice 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 well let's get back to slash and dash here <laughs> so um, I told Hollis, you know, that I was a real big horror junkie, and he had this idea that he wanted to do. He's never done it on anybody, and it was Michael Myers' head with the um, newspaper article about his escape from the mental hospital. And he was like, would you do this for me? I said, yeah, I'll do it for you. <laughs> and so we had met up at England, Oklahoma, uh, back in 2018, and it was pretty much an all-day piece. It was like eight hours. Um, it was really great. He's an awesome tattoo artist. Um, probably the most gentle-handed that I have um, ever, ever experienced. And then um, he is also my, my son's godfather. Wow, now this is sweet. This is sweet. Keeping it all in the community in this family is really awesome. <laughs> it is. <laughs> all right, so what are you going to get next? <laughs> I would like to finish my horror leg sleeve, um, and I would like to get my kneecap tattooed. Uh, I want to get Tiffany and Chucky in a stitched up heart, which Hollis is doing my entire right leg. Are you worried about the pain? No, I do know that the kneecap is probably one of the most sensitive spots to get tattooed, but I'm thinking if I can manage a foot tattoo, I think I can handle my kneecap. <laughs> All right, well, you guys can check her out. She's got her Instagram page, and um, definitely, again, thank you for your time today. Thank you for sharing 
your little ones with us as well. And uh, this is Baseball Guy reminding you to like this video, to comment. Check out the Twisted Angels, by the way. Yeah. And please subscribe. And this is Baseball Guy and Brianna. We're checking out.